Good day, viewers. Welcome to Africa Diaspora News. Today, we are seated with Anna Maria Shikongo, a frontline defender and environmental activist who recently took part in a demonstration against the prospective oil drilling in the Okavango Basin, which is an area in northern Namibia that borders Angola and Botswana. One of the reasons Anna Maria says that the oil prospecting is a danger is because of the fragility of this in, of the environment and the surrounding areas and also how the human life will be impacted by the oil production which is set to take place if Recon Africa does get oil in that region of Namibia. Um, as we talk to Ina Maria, we're just going to share some thoughts on the drilling, the prospecting, the production of oil, and then what it means for Africa, what it means for Namibia, and what it means for the inhabitants of the Okavango Basin, who make a subsistence on the land. Ina Maria, thank you for having us at Africa Diaspora News Channel. We would just like to ask you, what informed your opinion to march against the prospecting of oil in the Okavango Basin? Thank you for having me, Vita. Um, well, I'm very worried about um, the fragile ecosystem because the Kavango Basin is home to our first nation, our, sorry, our, our wildlife. Uh, we have more than seven endangered species uh, that, um, that live in that part of Namibia. Uh, we have the first nation, the Sun people, and we also have communities, Kavango, uh, the people of the Kavango region, Kavango East and Kavango West. And we're looking at what has happened before, not only on the continent, in Nigeria, and looking at Ecuador, looking at the USA, Pennsylvania, Colorado, Texas. Uh, it is an activity where we know that Namibia will not be able to recover from this destruction. Um, because, because of the usage of water and also because of the, of the, of the possible side effects, I think it is a decision, it is a very bad decision from the side of the Namibian government and, uh, Recon Africa, this company, to actually have an activity of this nature in a in a very sensitive ecosystem that supports uh, over a million people and um, and um, thousands of species that are animals, wildlife, and um, obviously the fauna and the flora that people depend on and the animals. Um, Ina Maria, are you familiar with the BP oil spill that happened in the Niger Delta? Yes, yes, definitely. I mean. um, some say that Shell actually got sued by some of the inhabitants of Nigeria and one of the grounds for suing is a grounds of humanity. Can you give our viewers more perspective on why it would be considered as a crime against humanity? Well, if you look at the spills in the Niger Delta and, um, and you see how the people have been impacted since the 50s, where they can't grow food anymore, uh, there's no more fish in the Delta, um, there, is, there are warlords that have taken over the area. It's, it's very worrisome. Um, because it literally strips the indigenous inhabitants of their livelihoods. And also, if you look at, um, um, the crimes that they committed, like with the Ogoni Nine and, uh, Kensarowiwa, where, where one of the witnesses that at the time had given a false testimony, he actually he actually did say that yes, he was he was paid to make a false testimony by Shah. So yes, Kensarowiwa was hanged, the Ogoni nine were hanged, and um and today the families they demand justice. We can also look at Total and Uganda, it's the same case study again where the communities ended up taking uh Total to court, but in France. So 
because of the nature of this industry which has got no ethics um they have no ethics whatsoever they don't consider indigenous people they don't consider black lives at all um and i and i know that the people in the amazon that are not necessarily considered as black people that considered as indigenous people uh, i must say that this industry has got no regard for indigenous lives and in our case in africa for black lives and this is where black lives matter where our lands are being taken over by multi corporations that come from outside uh so they come and mine here and leave us the people on the ground in situations that you would have never wished for nobody wishes for war nobody but these companies they come with their corruption and and their greenwashing to literally i would say this to wipe us out um the the fiscal <coughs> agreements the fiscal terms of the petroleum agreement call for a 5% royalty and additional profits tax that applies late in the life of the producing fields and also from the website it says that Recon Africa would hold 90% shareholding and Namco the national oil petroleum company of Namibia owns 10% now anybody would say that's not really a clever agreement to have a foreign multinational own 90% of such a huge project which would probably run into the billions of dollars and having the government only own 10% what is your comment on that well that is neo colonialism at its best um it is the continuation of the exploitation of our resources and our people that has been going on for more than 600 years um we can look at slavery we can look at colonialism we can look at apartheid and today we can look at uh, globalization where we can see the same trend over and over again um that gives foreigners more rights to our continent to our resources to for them but even gives them the right legally to literally wipe us out because it is made law or because they have signed up to certain agreements and um it like in this case i say we should not even be here because it is an activity that should not be happening in a country that is bordered by two deserts in a country that is experiencing heavy drought on the one um on the one side of namibia and uh, and yet they are here to poison the water in the only area that namibia has water like throughout the year so this is definitely a genocidal deal um and it is a holocaust and i totally believe that recon africa and its shareholders and its partners they should be they should be tried for the crimes against humanity that they are busy starting in namibia and definitely 90 to 10% literally just yeah it is pure neo colonialism at its best it's um on the 19th of march uh together with friday for the future vintok you delivered a petition to the ombudsman and to the minister of land reform have you gotten any response for your petition um the ministry is busy investigating based on what you have given them so they are busy investigating and we hope to get a response soon and the ombudsman needs 90 days to carry out its investigations um um just to answer back again to our allegations so um we are still waiting but it does not mean that we will not stop on knocking on other people's doors so the we will not stop i mean we even delivered a petition to parliament um earlier in the year and it has been discussed in parliament uh, but we still didn't get feedback to say of what's going to happen in mm, recon africa has assured uh, the namibian po- population that they will if they do discover oil they will uh, carry out the drilling 
of the oil, the production of the oil in an environmental, event, environmentally sound manner. What does environmentally sound mean to you? In the gas and oil industry, that does not exist. That is just a way of greenwashing again. And when we look at the Niger Delta, Ecuador, uh, Pennsylvania, Texas, all over the world, we can see that these activities were never done in environmentally sound ways. They were never done in any way. They were, there was never regard for the indigenous people, uh, nor for the people that lived in those areas. And I mean, if they can do it to their own people in Texas and Colorado, you know, who are we? You know, we all know about this neo-imperialist uh, views and, and how the world views black people. So, no, and we're looking at what has happened now already, where you have people that are, that are being asked to move from their fields, from their crop fields, so this company can put in a drill. It's... No, there's nothing. I mean, the mud, the mud drill pit is not lined. They said that they would line it. So if they do find oil and oil does end up in that pit, it will seep into the Matako River. It will go straight into the Delta, you know? So the fact that the mud drill pit is, is already not lined already shows that they are just talking. They are not really sticking to their words. And uh, in Bambi with... Sorry, earring fried on, we can use it there. Um, and if you look at Bambi, for example, uh, because they've been complaining about the Madre pit, nothing lines in Kawe, they have actually only lined the top part. They did not line the bottom part of it. So when it's full and you are up there, you will think that it's lined, but it's not. So that already shows that they are just talking for the sake of talking. Mm -hmm. In the parliament, you mentioned parliament earlier, and in our conversations before the interview, you said that um, you don't trust the minister because the minister of environmental and tourism, Mohamba Shifeta, actually assured the public through responses to an opposition party that everything that Recon does will be subject to environmental clearance. You told me that you don't really trust the minister that they are probably in collusion with foreign enterprises. So can you really uh, blame the Recon Africa if for putting profits above people if the African leaders themselves are working together and representing their interests here in the country? Well, corruption is nothing new to Africa, unfortunately. Um, it is nothing new and it is a disease that is unfortunately killing the continent and um, and we really think that um, bodies like the Hague and the UN they must also start punishing the corruptors because in most cases um, uh, it is the African presidents that end up going to the Hague but not necessarily the corruptors so that is a trend that needs to stop because when that stops then we know that these companies they will stop bribing our leaders and also because bribery is a crime in some of those countries like in the case of the big fishing scandal that if that we are currently um uh, discussing and we are just waiting for the court case to start where where we even had two ministers that are now sitting in jail which we call uh, the hashtag fish rot. um you can see that in Iceland, it's actually a crime to bribe people, especially in foreign countries. So we are really hoping that the government of Iceland will hold this company accountable because it is in their constitution to actually investigate this corruption case. But does it always happen? No. So, uh, yeah, the Global North has has a lot of blood on his hands, obviously, because of all of these practices and also because of not holding both parties accountable. I don't trust the minister one bit because there are many, there, there, are, there have been a lot of violations already that are not being really followed, like the land grabbing, uh, like the mud pit that is not lined. Nothing is being done about that. 
We are talking about illegal sand mining. They did not have clearance to do sand mining. They destroyed a soccer field that belongs to kids. They, um, uh, now they want to build a road, but do they even have a permit for that? No, they don't. So they, everything that they're saying right now, for me personally, I feel like it's just PR work. They are here to operate. They got the license already in 2015. The communities were ghosted in 2015. The communities were ghosted in 2019. Why are they only having the community engagements now that we started complaining in 2021 when they were supposed, when they started operations in 2019? I mean, um, I mean, in 2020, in December. Because we only found out about this uh, last year in September, so which was 2020, and that's when we found out that operations was going to start in 20, uh, uh, in December, and they were supposed to start in June actually, but because of COVID 19, they couldn't, and that is why the story broke out. So, if it wasn't for COVID 19, who knows what would have happened by now? So everything was done undercover. Why was it done undercover in the first place? Even like right now, you can see, uh, if you go to the website of the tender board, you can see tenders that are, I mean, um, uh, you can see, um, 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 I don't know what to call it. Um, I don't have the word. Um, they are asking people to submit comments on new, on new upcoming projects, but they're not being advertised in the newspapers, you know? So if you don't know anyone on that side, then, you will see another projects of you will see more and more projects of this nature popping up everywhere without the consent of the people that are actually um, that that will be impacted. So that is very very worrisome indeed. Ina Maria, um, thank you for for having us. Thank you for shedding uh, more light. Um, if there's anything you'd like to add, please feel free. It's a very interesting um, conversation that I think we should have with the uh, African diaspora. Are our resources uh, being manipulated? Are met, uh, multinationals putting uh, profits over people? Is it time for Africa to take a stand? Please uh, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, leave your comments, follow us on Facebook. Thank you for having uh, taking our time to be with us. Any final thoughts before we close the interview? Yes, um, definitely. And thank you for having me. Um, I think um, for us as global citizens, we must really look and put pressure on our governments to keep the fossil fuels in the ground. Currently, the fossil fuels, they are busy destroying our continent. They're busy destroying and killing our people. We can see what is happening in Mozambique. We can see that new pipelines are being built in Uganda. We can see that here in, in the Kavango uh, uh, region that they are now busy opening up the basin. When the whole world is talking about transiting towards renewable energies, hmm? we all know that if we open up the basin now, in 10 years, we will not be able to make a profit from this oil. We won't be because the prices are slamming every day. Namibia has got more potential of becoming a, an energy leader in solar technology because we have the sun and it does not cause as much damage to our ecosystem. And obviously there are many, 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 many other ways of generating energy that should be explored. Fossil fuel companies must stop this suicide, this, this holocaust that they are busy doing. And I just want to tell our people in the diaspora as well that this is the definition of Black Lives Matter. In the USA and elsewhere, black people are being discriminated against. They are being shot by the police every single day. But here we have foreign companies that are coming to literally cause genocide, a holocaust, ecocide, and because of this, we strongly urge everyone to please stand up, especially with climate fight, with uh, climate and uh, uh, frontline defenders, in protecting the bit of green spaces that we have. Because what happens in Kavango will not stay in Kavango. 
The one last thing I have to say is because the Kavango data, it is unlocked data, it will the environment will never recover. The toxins will continue accumulating because the because the oceans are far away. So how is regeneration going to take place? This is a suicide of our first nation. And we are not just talking about the first nation of Namibia, but the first nations of humanity are the Sun people. So these are all of our ancestors that are busy being wiped out by this company from Canada with the blessings of certain corrupt officials within Namibia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vita. <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for having us. Here we are in Vintuk, in Namibia. We're speaking about the Okavango Basin, some 500 kilometers away. Let us think about nature. Let us think about the future. Let us talk about renewable energy. Let us talk about preserving nature. Let us have these difficult conversations as we navigate what it means to live in a world. A world where man, animal, lives in harmony with nature. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the African Diaspora News Channel app in the Google Play and Apple App Store.